Okay, it's glove discussion time. You can not have just one pair of gloves that will do everything. These are just some of my gloves. I have uh, rain gloves permanently with my rain suit on both of my other bikes. But uh, gloves are very important because you go to put your hands down every time you go down. You can't help it. There's two things you always do if you misfortunately end up on the ground. You tend to keep your head up off the ground to see where you're going, like you're sled riding, and you put your hands down. Did you ever get a paper cut? Well, imagine getting gravel ground into your hand because you're, or even, I had a glove snap on this hand. It just snapped in the seam. I had a, a road race track accident. I slid off, put my hands down, and the glove snapped at the seam. The skin on this part of my hand rolled up like rolling up the lid on a can of sardines. And there was no blood. It just stretched the skin and it snapped and rolled up and I just rolled it back <laughs> and put some tape on it and it healed. It was this hand. But, uh, yeah, you always put your hands down first. Now, never buy buffalo leather anything. You can pull buffalo leather apart with your fingers like it was tissue paper. It, maybe not that weak, but it, it is, it's the garbage leather. Never buy a buffalo leather jacket. All right. You have gloves for... I have this pair of gloves. They are Icon... Super duty gloves. I have two pair. These gloves here, I know I bought them before 1997 because that was the last year I worked part time in a motorcycle shop. And I bought these while I worked there. So these are pre 1997. These gloves have, look how sun bleached they are. They're made of, uh, what's deer skin? I'm pretty sure they are made of deer skin. And uh, they're, they're a little pricey. They're around $65. And they're the best gloves I have ever owned, ever. They do not stretch, so you have to buy them. And I've dunked them, and I've put them in a bucket of water to try to get them to stretch. They won't stretch. I've actually had to cut this glove. I cut that cushion on the knuckles. You can see where I put slices in it because it was just too tight and I could not get the glove to stretch. I have had to touch up the stitching. They use quality thread and they double stitch the gloves. You can see the double row of stitching. But uh, these are the best gloves I've ever seen. I've had to replace the Velcro, had to sew it on. When you have leather stuff and you have it for a long time, you got to be good at sewing. But uh, these are the best gloves I've ever had and I bought white ones. In my size, you can see thread left over where I had to do a couple stitches. Nothing serious. But uh, they have this cushion on the back. And these cushions on the back of the knuckles and on the fingers. And that is for if you go down, you're not really going to put that part of your hand on the ground. But you can have things kick up from following a truck or a car and they kick up a stone if that hits you on the fingers and your fingers are trapped between your handlebar and whatever's coming back you're going to feel that so that is meant to protect your hands in a, for a couple reasons these are general all-use gloves in uh, normal temperatures I any mean, that my hands were uh black for a few years from the dye in these gloves but uh, after about 10 or 15 years, uh, they stopped bleeding. But uh, anyway, those are the best. They're made by Icon. They're called the Super Duty Glove. And uh, I, I've never had a pair of gloves better. I bought these at, uh, these are perforated. They have a hard plastic. 
knuckle protector. I'm not real crazy about Velcro. Uh, holding the glove on, <clears throat> that's not too dependent on the Velcro. But uh, these, these gloves were okay. I don't know what they're made of. But uh, that's for hot weather riding, they supposedly, but I don't notice them being any cooler than gloves that aren't perforated. <clears throat> now, when you, you head out in the morning and it's 70 degrees, okay, then you're, you're on your way home and it gets cold. All right, you want to keep the wind from going up your sleeves. So you get a pair of gloves that have gauntlets. These are unlined gauntlet gloves. I didn't want... Uh, the thinner the gloves, the more you can feel the clutch engagement, you know, finesse the throttle, finesse the front brake, uh, the thinner the gloves are. These are pretty generic, but gauntlet, and I've had these for over 20 years. You can tell by how uh, worn they are, but they are leather. Then when you really get cold, these are electric gloves. There's the plug. And there's the wire. You put them wire down each sleeve across your shoulders and have it coming out your sleeves. You hold them with your fingers and put your jacket on and then you plug the gloves in. And if you ever get electric gloves, they both have to be plugged in or you'll burn one of the gloves out if one of the plugs comes out. All right, they're a little too bulky and it's hard to work the controls. They're a little thick. I like electric heated grips better than I like these gloves. But electric heated grips don't keep the wind off the back of your hands. So it's a 50-50 deal. All right, these are just a pair of old winter gloves that I, my wife wore for years. Uh, they just never fit me. I bought these, geez, I, I remember. I bought these in 1982 when I sold Hondas. Uh, I bought these the day a buddy of mine bought a Honda CX500 Turbo from me. I was a salesman at that Honda shop. But uh, I've had these gloves since 1982. Okay. These gloves are generic. They're lined, they're kind of loose. And I don't know what the material is inside, but they always feel musty inside. They have a wiper on the finger. I think they may be for... Rain use, they have plastic, a hard plastic guard on the back. They got some knuckle protection. They're, they're pretty good for the cold weather, but they don't breathe. That's why they get musty inside, like uh, that material there. That's why I don't like six inch boots with that material. They, they, they don't breathe. So I've gone all the way around. Some gloves have studs. Okay, these are non-lined studded gloves this would be for hot weather uh, when the weather when the temperature drops and I don't want to have wind going up my sleeves anymore so I would head out on a on a Saturday morning six o'clock and uh, I don't plan on getting home to a run 10 o'clock at night I would start out with these gloves and I'd probably end up finishing the ride with these gloves okay that's uh, when you buy gloves, you only want to use lemon pledge on them. I once bought a Vanson jacket, which are among the best. They're made in uh, Massachusetts, I believe. And uh, that jacket was expensive. It was over $700. It may have been $800. But it came with one instruction in the sleeve, in the uh, pocket. It said, the only thing you use on this jacket is lemon pledge. So that's what I do. And I'll put the gloves on and I will spray this on the gloves while I have them on and then rub my hands together until I thoroughly disperse the uh, lemon pledge all over the gloves. And that's how you take care of gloves and that's how you have them for 30, 40 years. All right, that's the gloves. I commuted for over 40 years. I commuted in that suit for a couple hundred thousand miles, if not more, 
That's an arrow stitch suit. I actually got hit from behind at a stop sign while I had that suit on. They claim they're waterproof. They are not windproof. I do not like nylon for stopping the wind. You can still feel the air getting through. But uh, this suit here is, I would go to work in my electrician uniform and unzip the zipper all the way down, step into the right leg, then put the left leg on, pull the zippers up, and then pull the zipper up, and that's it. You just step into it. I could get in and out of that in less than 10 seconds. It is somewhat waterproof. It's got a vent across the back. You open up. If the air can get out, the air can get in to cool you, to carry away perspiration. It even comes with a thermometer, which I tended not to watch because a lot of times I never felt as cold unless I knew what the temperature was, just like when it's hot. I had all my gear on in West Virginia one day, and I, was, I knew it was hot, but I didn't feel hot until I saw a bank clock thermometer that told me it was 100 degrees. Then I started suffering. But uh, these suits, when I bought it, they were around $995. A couple, well, 25 years ago. And look how it's held up. I got hit from behind while riding that, uh, while using that jacket on one of my morning commutes to work. Nice big pockets for storing things. It's got vents. I showed you the back vent. It has pockets for accessing your inside pockets under this zipper. You can unzip that and get into your pants pockets. Uh, it has reflective materials. That strip there reflects, it lights up. Very good investment, especially if you're a commuter every day. It's got padding in the elbows, shoulders, knees. I hit the ground with that on. Knocked me out of work for nine months. Uh, best paid vacation for nine months of my life. Uh, I actually could have gone back to work a week later, but the company doctor wouldn't let me come back until my own doctor signed off to let me come back uh, and lift 50 pounds. I was an electrician, so I had to climb ladders. And the company doctor said, no, you can't come back and the orthopedic surgeons were gonna cut me open and fix me up. And I just went to my chiropractor for the hell of it to see what he thought. After about two months of therapy and orthopedic surgeons, the chiropractor looked at me, he said, uh, do you mind if I put your shoulder back in place? He fixed it in one second. Okay, on cold mornings, Here's my Witter electric vest with a heated collar. That is wonderful. I can't tell you how nice it is to have a heated collar. It has the thermostat, which I don't think is really important. This is an old style thermostat from my other. I have a heated Witter electric vest that has a V here. Um, but once I got a taste of heated collar, uh, I never went back. But these are, these are great, heated clothing. Heated gloves, heated vest. You have to buy, when you're gonna have, you can't have one jacket that's gonna work all year. You have to have one that you have room to put more clothing under. Just like motorcycle riding boots, you have to have a pair that's gonna work on normal summer days. Then you have to have a pair that you can put two pair of socks in. So I buy my boots in size 11 and then I buy them in size 12, both. One for hot weather, one for cold weather. Okay, so I would ride to work with this suit on in the morning when it would be in the 30s or 40s. And so the temperature goes up into the 70s or 80s in the afternoons. It never went from 30s to 80s, but I would put this in my saddlebag 
for the ride home. They call these mesh jackets. They have padding in the elbows, in the shoulders, up the spine, and uh, that's for the ride home. Okay, now for different styles of bikes. If you're riding a sport bike, you're sitting leaning forward. That's gonna give you a gap between your belt and your jeans, I mean your jacket. So you have to have a longer jacket, about this much longer for riding a sport bike. This jacket here comes with a liner. Uh, it's not in there right now, but uh, it has these nylon breather panels under the arms in the front there. It's got vents in the back. You can open and close with a zipper. It's got underarm vents. This is for uh, general 70, 65, 75, up to about, you know, however hot you wanna put up with. Uh, that's a good all around jacket for riding a sport bike. It has zip openings on the sleeves. That's for when it gets hot and you want the air to go up your sleeves to carry the heat away. And at the, on the other hand, you might want to close them and put on a gauntlet glove to keep the wind from going up your sleeves when it gets cold on your way home at night. Okay, I also like the white that uh, reflects the heat. This lights up in the headlights, so does this. It, uh, you can never be too conspicuous. But, uh, tr you know, this white reflects a lot of heat and it doesn't get as hot. If you want to test that, walk on uh, black asphalt in your bare feet and have something white beside it. You can stand on the white even if it's 90 degrees out. But if it's 80 degrees and it's been in the sun all day, that black will burn the bottoms of your feet. All right, here's a typical biker style jacket. I don't like the image, but it's hard to dispute the functionality of that jacket. It closes around the waist. It uh, has a longer skirt in the back to keep the wind from going up your back. It zips all the way up. It has that nice closure in the front for keeping the wind from going through your zipper and getting to you, which this also has. There's that zipper guard. They even have it on this, but this is a hot weather jacket. I don't know why they did that. And even my Aerostitch suit has a zipper to uh, keep the wind from going through your zipper. When it's an 80 degree day out and you're riding and you're doing 55 miles an hour, the temperature to your body is 55 degrees. So imagine what the wind chill is to your body if the temperature is 55 degrees and you're doing 55 miles an hour. The temperature of your body's in the 30s. So you have to be able to uh, stop the wind. Nothing stops the wind like leather. And these jackets have pockets for your hands hand warmer pockets and then they have some storage pockets. Now this has a full-time sewn in liner that can't be removed. And that's not as hot as you would think on a hot day. It's not bad. I, I'm just, I don't like the image of that jacket, but uh, it, you, can't, you can't fault the design. That is probably the best all around design jacket. All right. Here is a motorcycle a jacket for sitting sort of upright. I will wear this on like my, my Venture, uh, had a Pacific Coast, whatever. When you're sitting not really leaning far forward, it's not as long in the back. So if you have a jacket that comes down to here and you have a bike that you're sitting straight up, that tends to bunch up. I do like that it has the adjustable guard or the adjustable waistband with a kidney belt. Why do you need a kidney belt? To keep your kidneys from getting cold. That's what it does. It doesn't hold them still. 
but it has infinitely adjustable, which I like. It's got vents in the back. I put these leather tabs on here to uh, be able to grip the zipper. Those zipper tabs get into these flaps and then you, when you have gloves on, you can't reach them. I put these all on with glue. I, I just cut strips of leather and glued them together. That's why they look a little hokey. But anyway, this jacket has a removable full length liner. It comes all the way down. That is nicer. This also has vents on the sleeves for when you take the liner out. Remember, this jacket doesn't have any, any vents, front or rear, and it does not have a removable liner. And this jacket has a liner and vents, but the liner in this one is just a vest. No lining down the sleeves. Oh, there's the liner. I stuffed them in the sleeves. There it is, it's just a vest. It's not, I don't think that's as, enough. You may have to carry a sweatshirt or something for when the temperature is going to go down below 60 degrees for the ride home, especially if you're going to be using the interstates. So, to care for these jackets, Lemon Pledge. That's all you want to use on these jackets. Uh, anyway, and if you get mildew on jackets, I have a pair of gloves here I can demonstrate. I took my jackets out last year. And some of them, especially my leather pants, I keep them in my garage. I, I have 14 jackets. But uh, I had mildew starting on my leather. I don't know why the leather is a great place for mildew to take up residence. But if you mix a little bit of lemon juice with warm water and wipe the leather, the mildew disappears in an instant. I was trying different uh, scrubs, different like even lemon pledge and rubbing and rubbing and I couldn't get the mildew to go away. Then I saw that on YouTube. Use a little bit of lemon juice in water and it makes mildew on leather. It, it, I mean, it disappears instantly. So I, that's why I didn't clean these up. I wanted to show you in the video. Anyway, that's... Uh, you can't have just one jacket. You have to have them for hot weather. You have to have them for cold weather. You have to have them for days when you start out and it's cold. And then you have to switch over to uh, a vented jacket. I myself never ride without a jacket and gloves. I have seen road rash. A buddy of mine uh, went down on the street and his uh, he had to get skin grafts done to his uh, leg and he said that is the most painful thing he ever endured in his life was having skin grafts done so and I also where I should have brought them out I wear Kevlar jeans They're, uh, the brand I bought were called Dragon jeans D-R-A-G-G-I-N they have a big patch about as big as the red area on this of Kevlar in the knees and a big patch on the butt of Kevlar because a pair of uh, Levi's, uh, I think Motorcyclist Magazine did a test, a demonstration, and they showed that a pair of jeans sliding on asphalt or concrete, they are breached in less than four feet in a get off. They, it's not gonna protect you at all. Uh, not for long anyway, but uh, Kevlar uh, jeans, that's what I have four pair of those and uh, that's what I use. I always wear everything boots up over the shins up over the uh, ankles uh, for all different temperatures and I wear my Kevlar jeans then I wear a leather jacket or a mesh jacket and you have to have two or three different pairs of gloves and watch the weather. But uh, that's why you have to have a trunk or a tank bag so you can carry all this stuff along with everything else like a rain suit. But uh, nothing stops the wind like leather and nothing lasts as long as leather. Nylon jackets are hot. They have, uh, I've had Dakar 
replica jackets. I've had the waxed cotton bell staffs from uh, England, and I've had the bell staff nylon. I think they would call it an enduro jacket. They're three quarter length. I've had those. I don't care how many vents you put on them. They are hot. They are never cool. I do not like nylon. And when it's cold, it doesn't stop the wind. It, you can feel it going right through the jacket. So uh, that's my two cents on jackets and gloves. See you out there.